made it really, really easy for me. Um, this is this is your ankle hitch. So the ankle hitch, um, for those who know, I like food, so uh, I like to give some correlate, you know, to, to my have some fun in this, right? So the green, well, let's, let's call that pickles. The red is ketchup, and the yellow is mustard. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take, make sure this green or the pickles, pickles are loaded all the way up, and that allows you to, to be able to adjust the length of that strap. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the pickles all the way up. And then the ketchup and mustard, this is what's actually going to pull traction. Uh, the yellow, the mustard is what's going to be loaded onto the dart, and the, we're going to pull with the ketchup, right? So ketchup and mustard and pickles. So must, the ketchup needs to be all the way tight. So we're going to take this and we're going to load this up underneath the uh, ankle. Obviously, I'm not, I wasn't being too uh, too gentle there, but um, we're going to take this, put this around, and we want to just kind of find so so find a malleoli, right? So right right here, we're going to go just above that and put that velcro in place. Now you can see here. All right, so I'm going to take my my pickle, pull my pickle here, and get that nice and snug up underneath his heel, right? So that's that gives me some nice uh, stability. I'm going to move it around here a little more than I probably should, just so you guys can see what I'm looking at a little bit better. And then notice my my ketchup is all the way up here, and my mustard is down here. All right, so we're going to take the uh, ischial strap or upper thigh system and same thing a mustard is pulled tight so i'm going to have i'm going to set this up so that it makes it really easy for me to adjust once it's in place so i like to have the mustard on top of the thigh um, with the 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 actual receiver to the outside of the leg so i'm going to take this to make sure that happens i'm going to place the buckle underneath like that and i'm going to come up walk this up along the leg and i'm going to put this in place here like that buckle these together place my um start the position where i'm going to have you know visualize where i'm going to have that uh, receiver and you know so we're going to look for iliac crest uh, instructions talk about a belt line so, you know, where, where is that? So our iliac crest, you know, we're, we're looking for, you know, pelvic stability and we're gonna be looking up there for that. I didn't talk about that in this video, um, but at this point I would have already put a pelvic sling on just to, for me, I prefer to have a great additional stability. My primary and secondary assessment gave me an indication that we have a unstable pelvic fracture, but just, to, just as a matter of additional protective measures, um, I went ahead and put one on there anyway. So, you know what, while we're doing it, why don't we just go ahead and do it. What they say, if you don't talk about it, just do it, right? So, so here's a classic. Uh, this is the Pel Sam Pelvic Sling 2. And I'm gonna slide this underneath my patient. I'm gonna be as gentle as I possibly can. Now, it's important to remind yourselves uh, every time, you know, unless you're doing this, you know, cons consistently, that, you know, you need to, instructions are there for a purpose. So we talk about pelvic binder or pelvic sling. Make sure that we're using this right. Let's think about our landmarks. So refer, ref refresh, our, refresh our memory. So placement, the correct level application is at the greater trochanters. So understand where the the femur comes up right and where the trochanter is actually where all that all kind of inter, inter, uh, the intersections uh, with the pelvis so we're going to go around there and we're going to take this we're going to place this through and we're going to pull this thing until the the teeth bite in you'll hear the click Hopefully you heard that click. And then 
basically just put this in place. And you heard it, probably heard the teeth again, um, just basically retracting back, but it's, uh, it's definitely in place. I'm not going anywhere, all right? So it's hard, you know, again, you have to be really careful. I'm being a little aggressive with the patient for the sake of time uh, right now. I know you guys don't, don't want to sit here and watch this video forever. And, but, so now we've got this up here. So again, we're visualizing where our, uh, uh, the, uh, the, where the, where the, where the receiver is going to be. We can adjust this a little bit to pull it down, but I like to be able to have some play in there and I'll show you here in a second why. All right. So go ahead and extend my, uh, my poles. Okay. There we go. So now we want to have at least one pole section below the foot. Okay. So I have that there. Now I've already visualized where my my receiver's at. And actually with this patient, um, it actually makes good sense to actually just keep it at full length. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna load that in there. I'm gonna take my my Velcro. Velcro is gonna go up underneath the leg and then come up around and over the knee. All right, so got my loaded my receiver coming down here and um, here's that mustard again, right? So I'm gonna take that mustard and I'm gonna load that mustard onto the dart, just like that. Hopefully you can see that, all right? And as we discussed, here's that ketchup. So I'm not gonna pull too much yet. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna play around with my, uh, my, my upper thigh system a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a little bit down here because I make sure I have enough enough play enough strap down at the bottom to make sure I have to get some good traction I'm gonna go ahead and place my my straps on and again you know th there's there's all kinds of different methodologies or philosophies on this you know obviously if I have if this is a two rescuer situation I'm gonna have somebody who can actually be pulling manual traction for me which is ideal but if it happens to be just me and my buddy out um, for a hike and, or, you know, just me by myself and I happen to come across somebody, you know, I, uh, I don't have a whole lot of options except for to, to wait for rescue to come. But again, in this case, if this is an emergent thing and I, I'm def I, I've evaluated that other than, other than this femur fracture, He's relatively stable, and but I know he's losing a lot of blood, so I have an internal hemorrhage control issue. I'm gonna not wait. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in place. So um, let's go ahead and just double check up here, make sure we're nice and tight. And then now we can come down here. So again, it's I'm not gonna get into it. number one. He's on the bed too. It makes it a little difficult, but. It's, so we want to basically we want to basically pull manual traction, and I can do that um, simply by just climbing up, you know, beside him, and actually putting myself in the best possible position to to maximize um, my uh, my ability to control body mechanics. Right, where am I going to get the most force to achieve the best reduction for him? You know, if I have a, if I have a, a weaker upper body, you know, I may have to think about that um, using uh, the ability, like a, almost like a row, pull, a pulling row, you know, and pulling towards me. Um, and then, but at the same time, make it so I can actually be able to reach uh, the strap. So, all right, so let's look here. Let's got this before I get pulled this on this. Um, one of the things I noticed on this is it was the other direction. So I want to place that here. So, let me see. There you go. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference mechanically, but it's just, I'm pretty picky. But anyway, so at this point, um, if I'm gonna assume I'm a single, single rescuer, I'm going to um, make sure you guys are seeing what I want you to see. Okay, let's bring it up a little bit. Okay, so 
here's that here's that ketchup again right and the pickle is already out of the store he's already done his job so mustard is loaded on here and now we're doing some ketchup pull and now i'm just going to pull right and now pull a little bit i'm going to check re reassess um neurovascular you know do i do i have better are my is it sensation restored is my or uh, you know is my uh, cap refill is that better um is how how does it look on limb length if i had a leg here uh, have i restored limb length have i you know have i uh, re, you know eliminated that conflict i don't know those are all things i do so but i'm going to just and i'm going to go ahead and pull a little more you know obviously communicating with the patient the best i can and as i do this and to constantly just keep reassessing as I go. Um, so that's really that's really it. And I have so I'm going to assume that we've uh, we've reduced the fracture. That um, right now I have I have restored my limb. I have re eliminated my conf my uh, limb length conflict. So both both feet are at the same same uh, on the same plane now. The I now have, I have good, you know, I have good sensory. I've got good vascular uh, response. You know, uh, patient seems to have some pain relief. I have not used any analgesics yet at all. Um, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stabilize him. So just a little further because I wanna make sure that we can get him packaged up. So once the team gets here, you know, that, to help me down the mountain or from wherever I am, that um, he'll be ready to go. So we're reducing on scene time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him packaged up. So here's my uh, my board splint. I think this is moldable. So, you know, I'm going to give it some more rigidity in there. But obviously not reduce, you know, to a point where I'm not gonna reduce pressure out. Once it's in the back of his leg, I'm gonna mold it better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and place this up underneath of his leg. I'm gonna make sure that I'm covering his, and my traction smart trainers give me a little problem today, so I apologize, bear with me. Okay, and that's it's obviously the traction's already on there, so it doesn't wanna go back in right now. Okay. So we're gonna put that on the, the board splint is on there. And again, you have to be a little creative how you get this done. And you know, same same splinting um, protocols. So you want to mobilize joint below and above the injury. So we're coming up in there. Now I'm gonna take a little coflex. And this coflex is already set up with an easier pull tab on there which is extremely important so as i secure the splint to the leg i want to make sure that i'm not going to prevent myself from seeing being able to reevaluate easily um, so i'm gonna go ahead and put that on there you know so i'm going to continue packaging that up again i don't want to have to bore you guys with this but as they say keep going do it train as you want to do it right so <laughs> uh, by the way i broke my traction splint trainer um actually i didn't break it but it's broken um so please again please forgive me Okay, at this point, I'm gonna, um, the only thing I have left to do is, we've went ahead and put a splint on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do another neurovascular reassessment. And then, what I'm gonna do is, I want to uh, really think about the fact that, um, you know, I have some swelling there, so if I have ice packs available, I'm gonna go ahead and start packing that femur um, in ice. 
and I'm going to make him comfortable, uh, start treating for shock. Um, you know, I'm set reassessing all that over and over again. And, um, at this point, I don't know that there's anything else that, that I want to address in this video. Um, you know, if I have a hypothermic blanket, I'm throwing that on there, but again, I'm, I'm not trying to address everything that, that should be taken care of in a, in a trauma situation. I'm really trying to stay on target here, but, um, but it never hurts to just touch on these things. I know. But anyway, so, uh, again, treating for shock, you know, watching out for hypothermia and, uh, you know, using ice or, or cold water. If there's a spring nearby, getting some stuff to help try and reduce that swelling, um, as best as you can. And, and that's about it. And then, uh, you know, start working on the, uh, the evacuation at this point. All right. I hope that this is helpful. If you have any questions, uh, do not hesitate to give us a call. Uh, you can reach uh, me at 330-552-2560. Uh, you can also reach me uh, via email at Jason T, so J-A-S-O-N-T at E-P-A-N-D-R.com. E -E All right, thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.